Hey, what's up, guys? It's Flackfire. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare is due out on November 4th. I'm not going to be picking it up for a variety of reasons, the top five of which I'm going to outline in this video. After a long absence, I actually booted up Black Ops 3, which resulted in the terrible domination gameplay you're seeing here in the background. Now, I know I talk about Battlefield a lot on this channel, and it's going to sound like I'm hating on Call of Duty, but keep in mind, I grew up with Call of Duty, and I loved a lot of those games. So, let's get down to it. Number 5. The Setting Fans of Call of Duty have been clamoring for a return to the game's roots for years. Seriously, it's been eight years since World at War and the true battlefields of World War II. Jetpacks are pretty much old news now, and many players dislike that kind of gameplay mechanic. Infinite Warfare will probably push the futuristic gameplay further in this direction, since we know there will be zero-G space combat. I think a big issue with the past few Call of Duty games is that the setting has been too futuristic to be relatable for some players. I'd say it's also a major reason why the historically rooted premise of Battlefield 1 has been so well received. Number 4. It's devolved into a Twitch shooter. Call of Duty didn't used to be a Twitch shooter. There was a time when skill actually prevailed over ping. Maps used to be significantly larger and more open, allowing players to actually use more than one class of weapon. The most recent Call of Duty games are inundated with cramped maps and short engagement distances. This problem is made worse by continued server issues. Perhaps Infinite Warfare will be different. Who knows? But I think I've reached a fork in the road with Call of Duty's gameplay, and it's going down a path that I don't want to walk. Number 3. Quality Issues Call of Duty Black Ops 3 still has issues, almost a year after launch. In fact, when it came time to actually record this video, I had to force quit the game several times, eventually hard restarting my Xbox to get Black Ops 3 to actually connect to the servers and sync data. This is unacceptable. Issues remain with the party systems as well, with some players unable to see their friends online or even join their games. What really concerns me is that Activision will have to support both Infinite Warfare and Call of Duty 4 Remastered, probably stretching resources pretty thin. There's already concern over the quality of Call of Duty 4 Remastered, since the game's bull shots already look questionable, with floating rocks and improper modeling. In Infinite Warfare itself, I heard the same scream used at least three times during the Black Sky gameplay. You couldn't get a few extra screams to make it a little less redundant? For a AAA game, that's not exactly encouraging. Number 2. Gambling Black Ops 3 featured nothing short of gambling with supply drops. It was exploitative, disgusting, and apparently it was extremely profitable for Activision. While true that you don't have to spend money, the current structure for supply drops allows duplicates of items you already have, wasting your credits and potentially your money in an effort to get the item you want. Black Ops 3 was also rife with other microtransactions, plus the community breaking Season Pass, and Activision hasn't been shy about announcing a Season Pass for the upcoming Infinite Warfare. They're sticking with the same system gamers have hated for years, instead of finding another alternative, despite all of the outcry. Based on the success of Supply Drops in Black Ops 3, I have no reason to assume they won't be returning for Infinite Warfare. And number 1. Ethan Ethan is the one bright spot in Call of Duty's promotional efforts for Infinite Warfare. If you're unfamiliar with Ethan, he's your robot battle buddy. He's also already one of the most compelling characters in the game, based on what we've seen. At the beginning of the Black Sky gameplay, Ethan goes up to injured civilians, asking them if they're okay and telling them to seek shelter. You okay, sir? Get yourself to safety! it's possible he's actually some kind of artificial intelligence. Based on his interaction with people, he appears very naive. He actually asks the main character why the set deaf forces are attacking. It's almost childlike. He's asking questions and does appear to be learning. So, you may be wondering, if I'm intrigued, why is Ethan my number one reason to skip the game? The answer's simple. 
I don't believe Call of Duty Infinite Warfare will use the character to his greatest potential. Ethan will probably wind up as some novelty plot device and will die in some cliched, sad, or sacrificial way. A character like Ethan would do better as the game's protagonist, learning what answering the Call of Duty really means, especially if your game is set in the future. Having a robot learn what it means to be human and to experience convictions and emotions for the first time? That would be a unique story, and a first for the series. I'd buy the game on that premise alone, yet it seems like the most compelling part of Call of Duty Infinite Warfare is destined for the junk heap. Maybe you're listening to these reasons with a different viewpoint than I have, that's fine. But for me, these are the five reasons I won't be ordering Call of Duty Infinite Warfare or the remastered version of Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. But what are your thoughts? Will you be picking up the game? Tell me why or why not in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like, consider sharing on Facebook and Twitter, and of course, subscribe. I've always got more content on the way. As always, thanks for watching.